Welcome to the edge. Thank you, you know the rules of the game. Yes, um, so I believe. You just need to pick up an envelope okay. and read what's inside. Righty how? Discover a question. The question is, the singularity of your art lies, at least in part, in its hybrid and transdisciplinary nature. Could you discuss writing in terms of image production and or image production in terms of writing. Hmm. To make an image, whether it's writing, whether it's uh, making a mark on a piece of paper, whether it's taking a photograph and later, as I learned, making films, even making sculpture, they all became processes of making an image. Yeah, um, recently you morphed into a poet, oh, yeah. a published poet. I don't know if you were writing poetry before you got mm. you started to get published. Uh, how does that relate to image making? I mean, do you think of poetry in terms of images and um, is there any conceptual connection between your written work and the images, the visual work? Well, uh the, I, I've, as I say, I've always written and I've always mm. been interested in poetry, I've always read poetry and uh, prose. I find poetry in itself something that I can't lend myself to making images from. So mm. I, I, my prose poetry is more a, a way of constructing the images the way I, I want to construct images. Um, as I've mentioned in the book, I, when I write, it, to me it's, as, it's the way I take photographs and when I take photographs it's the way I draw and when I make films it's the way I write. They're all constructed in similar fashions and uh, the internal logic of, say, um, constructing an image with pens and pencils mm. on paper uh, moving across the page is a similar process of moving across the page with words and with concepts mm -hmm. and with ideas. So it's not a uh, writing to me isn't a, a linear construct. Mm -hmm. It's um, moving through dimensions, whether vertically, horizontally, through time, uh, all the dimensions possible one can mm -hmm. explore. I think you recognize the quote. It's a quote. It's called, it's, it says, if the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. If we take it as a, as a figurative notion, shall we say, mm. uh, or a metaphor, then if we could say the, uh, the cleansing of the mind, let's say, that could be, oh, uh, losing distractions as much as you can in your life so you're not troubled by say noisy neighbors or you're not troubled by um, having to worry about where the next meal's coming from or any number of things that are mm. a distraction potential distraction from from your uh, exploring your ideas mm -hmm. so if we take that as, as the one the, the cleansing notion mm. and the infinite being perhaps uh, the idea of your the possibilities of uh, your where your ideas could go so then I think we could start working with that so if you can clear away all the things in your life that are that are a distraction mm -hmm. from your your focus on on working with your ideas to make as pure and unadulterated Mm -hmm. manifestation of your uh, ideas then uh, mm -hmm. I think that's that's how that's what I could and possibly mm -hmm. many people could take from that. From so that it's thing. very interesting thinking of for instance uh, your tendency not to frame certain images for example mm -hmm. I was wondering whether that could possibly be related to a desire to uh, not pretend that there is no edge 
but um, a desire to challenge a kind of framing which is uh, isolating the image from the rest of its environment, mm. which in your own shows and exhibitions, you do exactly the opposite. I want to make a seamless crossover between mm. all the disciplines that I enjoy yeah. playing with. And I think I've said in some of my writing before that uh, even a photograph within a, within a boundary, I want to suggest more than you immediately see, mm -hmm. suggest more than what is contained within the boundaries. And I hope that is true even of a, a fixed state thing such as a, a video where you're seen on a screen mm -hmm. or even if it's a projected screen. Yeah. I'd like to think that, that you, you can read and imagine and I like to suggest mm -hmm. things that are just going off screen so you can start bringing them in mm -hmm. and you imagine them yourself. Because I like to play with the imagination. Uh, I like to leave a space. Mm -hmm. Solitude is an essential part of the creative process. Do you see this as a necessary evil or as an opportunity? This um, uh, catalogue in which you find uh, on the cover of the catalogue, there is a well. It's, it's a self-portrait, of course, mm. but um, there are many such um, solitary figures mm. in the book. Mm. Uh, no group photographs. Um, mm. there, yeah. What? Yes, that's a good point. Yes. Yeah. What do you make of that? Is that a deliberate choice, or is this uh, does this amount as to a, a kind of um, recognition that working at, in the field of art is necessary, necess necessarily sorry, a solitary activity or is mm. that a deliberate choice? Uh, well, working you know, as a group yes. of course, working groups is mm. not really an option is it? No, well um, there's several ways to go with this. I think to work solitary as again to focus on a uh, single points to be able to, in a non-distracted way, to purely focus on what it is you're trying to achieve is, isn't necessary. Mm. But to be a solitary figure, I think, is, um, well, I don't know, I, I can only speak for myself, but to, I need to go out and I need to meet people, I need to socialise, mm -hmm. I need to read, I need to go and visit museums, I need to be with people. I mean, we are, I think, inherently gregarious people, um, human beings are gregarious mm -hmm. creatures, and so, and, and with a need to communicate. And so the modes of communication that you gain from being with mm -hmm. lots of people is a, a necessary part of mm -hmm. Uh, image production as an artist, mm. but I think that's yeah. necessary anyway for any human. After 25 years of working in the artistic field, do you think your work has matured into something different from what you set out to do in the first place? I've got a, a slide, uh, a, uh, a transparency of one of the first pieces I made when I was on the first few weeks of being in art school. And I've kept that slide and it's, I find it quite amazing that I can look at it and still recognise it and still mm. recognise those ideas mm -hmm. and that, that thought it, and it's still there, it's still it, present in yeah. modern images, you know, in the, the images I'm even making to this day. Do you day. see a kind of continuity between your earlier work and uh, your, more, your most recent work? At the same Very time, so. I've seen from, well, from if one adopts an external point of view, there has been quite a change uh, happening when you began to publish poetry collections. I, um, there is a long history of prose poetry being written about cityscapes and uh, Baudelaire's own Paris Spleen was definitely about that, the, you know, the, an attempt to convey and describe the modern realities of the city and uh, what happens to the individual uh, lost in the crowd or uh, experience, experiencing uh, a form of solitude mm. in an urban setting, which is something that uh, one finds in your earlier work. 
in uh, your early visual work. At the same time, there was in, in the preface to Baudelaire's Paris Plain, with which I think we're both familiar, uh, mm -hmm. the suggestion that the prose poem was a literary genre which lends itself to a kind of approach which ceases to capture the movements of consciousness. Mm. So a kind of poetic equivalent of um, the interior monologue in fiction. Mm. And I think that um, what you have achieved as a poet so far um, in your first two published collections is definitely related to, to that attempt. We mm. write narratives of consciousness which are not removed from reality, uh, far from it, but which are uh, very often linked to the practicalities of um, image making exactly. and often refer to yes. that particular reality. Uh, so it's as if seen from an external point of view, it's as if your poetry, your prose poetry, because of its, because the prose poem lends itself to a discursive method, mm -hmm. unlike uh, verse, perhaps, or perhaps more than verse, mm -hmm. um, is constantly extending your work as a photographer uh, mm -hmm. rather than prefacing it. Mm -hmm. uh, is this something you consider to be true of your recent work? Oh, uh, well, you've said it absolutely spot on. I mean, I was taking that notion of Baudelaire's where he was looking at the city and taking mm -hmm. that, that internal monologue, as you say. Um, but I was, what I was attempting to do in my first collection, um, The Logic of the Stairwell, mm -hmm. was to to explore what it was to look at a photograph. Uh, I, I'm just f fascinated mm -hmm. by the way the mind works and the journey it goes on. So you're not, the, there's no linear progression across the page, mm -hmm. you know, you don't go from, you know, you, you jump from corner to corner from the depth and you start reading in possibility mm -hmm. of if there's a figure in it and then you, you'll start interpreting what the figure's doing, what she or he is like, what have you, and on and on. And I was interested the way my mind was working when I'm exploring mm -hmm. an image. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to try and write that, try and describe mm. that. Well, my initial intention was that would help me in my image making. Mm -hmm. then, but I came, became to realize that it, it was extending mm -hmm. the, the photograph, it was extending the, the image into another realm, which is what I've always enjoyed before, you know, in terms of the, my other forms of image making. So I saw that it became an image in itself. So. I, 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 I began to think, oh, okay, what I will do, maybe I can have an exhibition or publish a book where mm -hmm. I'd have the photograph uh, next to my text. That was my proposed next stage. And then I realized that mm. I, actually, I think that's irrelevant. Mm. It's, I don't want people to see the photograph that I'm talking about. Mm. I want them to construct an image as Baudelaire would want people to construct the city around his mm -hmm. monologue that he was, you know, propounding. Do you believe in the potential for contemporary art to create new ideas in an age of post postmodern irony and skepticism? Skepticism, sorry. Any artist who really believes or well, maybe artists who don't believe in the future, or maybe believe in the, the, or maybe believes in the hopelessness of uh, humankind, or is completely mm. disillusioned, uh, even to their own, their own state of mind of nothing is worthwhile, to just wake up in the morning and make a single mark on a page. Mm then it's inherently hopeful, mm. it's inherently unique. No two people can make a mark on the page in the same way. So I think it is possible. Well, I believe it is possible. Mm. I, I don't think there's really any question of it. Um, again, I think the, the notion of so many artists and filmmakers, what have you, re 
trying to re-establish, if you like, uh, older ideas of art. I mean, yeah, Goethe said there's nothing new under the sun. Mm. Uh, but, okay, but no two people can take the same photograph in the same way, even if they're standing next to each other. You know, there's a shift in reality, there's a shift in tilt, physically, mm. um, mentally, all, on all layers. So, as much as the the deconstruction of a mm. previous form to re-emerge it, if you like, in a, in a more contemporary state mm -hmm. or in a more contemporary ambit, is there's a kind of relevance to it, I suppose. But I like to see things that I've, I've never seen before. I mm -hmm. like to see juxtapositions of a word and an image of a mark, mm. of a, uh, a thought, of a concept, of um, uh, something that references mm. little but means so much. And so, yes, of, mm. uh, absolutely, of course, there's a, mm. there's, a, there's a world of things still to be made, like there's should a world be a of discoveries. Say again? It should be a skinning of the eyes. Well, it's it really, indeed, yes. yeah, Otherwise, it's not really worth it. It reminds no, me of, of an interview I read of you know, the musician Robert Wyatt, yes. who it was, it was asked why, what kind of music he, why he was producing music. And his answer was, why well, I liked, I, I, I write music and I play music, the music that's in my head and that I never hear on the radio. Oh, right. Uh, which says it all about the need so. to, to create something, not necessarily yes. something new, but something which, yes. which, are, um, which is valuable because mm. it's uh, not necessarily because it departs from established models, but because it is a vital necessity to, to make that singular mark on the page. Indeed, yes. And, and it's, a, it's a hopeful note, like you say, it's yes. a very um, cheerful and, and, and joyful option, I think. <laughs> What memories do you retain of your recent experience in Liège, and mm. maybe this interview, uh, and more largely the the context in which this exhibition uh, took place at well, the Galerie Rutert? Yes. Well, um, uh, I'd like to refer slightly back to I, I did my postgraduate in Maastricht. Mm. I did my postgraduate in Maastricht up the road, and uh, this was my first time I, I, we started visiting the age with the other students, we'd come down and go to the bars and what have you. Uh -huh. And I fell in love with the city then. And I've been many, many times over the years. And every time I come here, I love it. I absolutely love it here. And so... Kind of return to the roots. So, uh, well, in a way, in absolutely, ways, uh, exactly, uh, yes. And I reference Is it still the, the same Liège as uh, when you were well, a student in Maastricht? Or uh, do you find it different? Well, like all cities and all, yeah. you know, they've developed. Mm. But there's still fundamentally a, a Liège that mm -hmm. I've always known and loved, you know. And, so it's uh, ironical that you are back with the show here. Well, this is what I was going on to say, I think, that it occurred to me as you asked the question that uh, it's actually, it's, um, Liège has been a crossing point for me mm -hmm. over the years. Of all the cities I've lived in, all the places I've gone around the world, it's, it's been like a crossover point mm -hmm. between my different journeys. So it's actually rather perfect that this um, this exhibition mm -hmm. is here in Liège. It's it's almost an epicenter of all of of many of the different things I've done. Yeah. This is an apt conclusion to our yeah. interview to our entretien. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mark Atkins, for very well being with us. Thank you for asking uh, me. Till very soon. Yes, well indeed. Again soon, of no doubt. <laughs>